Good evening and welcome to the City of Santa Rosa meeting on Summerfield Road Improvement Project. My name is Rob Sprinkle. I'm the Deputy Director of Traffic Engineering and I want to welcome everyone to this meeting tonight and, and I appreciate you spending your evening with us. So we're going to get started here right on time. Uh, before we begin the presentation though, I want to ask our Zoom host, Mary Lou Nichols, our Administrative Secretary uh, with the City of Santa Rosa to explain how the meeting will work. Mary Lou? Thank you, Rob. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. Please know the City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. At the end of the presentation, Rob will open up the meeting for public questions and comment. At that time, I will describe how you can participate in the question and answer portion of the meeting by raising your hand in Zoom. Rob, you're muted. Sorry about that. I got a little ahead of myself and didn't unmute myself. So um, tonight we're going to uh, start off with a little bit of project history, talk about um, how we got to this point today. We're going to review our existing conditions, look at some of the proposed striping um, that we're proposing for Summerfield, and we're going to review some locations throughout the city that have similar improvements where we've had some success with this type of treatment. Then we'll move on to the questions and answers and comments where I really get to hear what the community's concerns are and hopefully answer a lot of your questions. So looking at the project history, uh, Summerfield, Bethards, and Hone were all identified as slurry candidates as part of our pavement preventative maintenance program. So a, a lot of people look at these streets and, and they look like they're in, in pretty good condition and they actually are. And that's why we wanna put a slurry seal on them. So a slurry seal is a product, it's a treatment that's a fairly low cost treatment that helps prolong the life of our asphalt and really helps um, give us an extra, you know, an extra several years, 10 years or more out of our asphalt that we've invested so much money into. Um, this, this treatment is um, a lot less expensive than putting on a fresh overlay and a lot less expensive than a reconstruction as well. And I kind of think of it as uh, paint on your house, right? So you paint your house maybe every 10 years to help keep the water out, help preserve the wood and the, the siding of your house. So you don't have to start replacing boards and, and replacing the structure of the house because you let it deteriorate. The same thing is true with a slurry seal. So along with a slurry seal, which is shown in the side over here, this is the operation of a slurry seal where they're putting down this sand rock emulsion um, type uh, uh, surfacing. Um, it provides us an opportunity to, to restripe the entire roadway. So we eliminate all the striping, we put the slurry down, and then we put the striping back. So it gives us this opportunity where we could restripe the roadway in a different configuration if we need to. So that along with, um, we got some requests um, for looking at the intersection of Brookshire and, or Carissa and Summerfield Road to look at some of the site distance issues that were going on there. As people are exiting Brookshire, many of you know who live in that, um, on that road or in, in that neighborhood, recognize that there's um, challenges exiting there with the curve in the road, the tree that used to be there, which we've already cut down, um, and, uh, just the approach speed of vehicles and not knowing whether they're gonna go straight or, or if they're even if they're in the turn pocket, if they're gonna go straight across the intersection as they do a lot of the time. So we're trying to address some of those issues that um, the public's experiencing out there as well. Finally, when we looked at this area to see if we wanted to do any striping changes, we looked to see if, um, we looked through our, our call log and in our call log, we had several requests um, to address some speeding issues that were being reported out there. We checked in with our police department and they confirmed that they were receiving um, requests to address speeding. And we also had some requests about um, improving the pedestrian crossings at the, the location. 
not at just that location, but along the entire corridor. So that's really what got us started um, looking at the striping modifications on this second. So looking at the existing conditions on Summerfield Road, um, it's currently striped with a five foot bike lane, two 11 foot travel lanes in each direction and a center turn lane that's at 10 feet. As you move, this is at the section, I'm sorry, from between Hohen and Carissa. So as you move south down Summerfield, um, from Carissa down to Bethards, the striping changed. And that striping changed in about 2007, where we added the left turn lane southbound at Carissa. We removed one of the travel lanes there. I'm sorry. We removed one of the travel lanes there and um, added a bike lane and a buffer lane in the southbound direction. And that's what's depicted right here. In the northbound direction, that's remained the same since that period of time with two travel lanes in the northbound direction and a bike lane. Although we have received requests from the neighborhood or from that area to do the same thing we did in the southbound direction by removing one of the travel lanes to help eliminate racing and, and speeding along that segment. So when we're looking at whether the removal of a travel lane is even kind of on the table and even a possibility, um, we look at the volumes on the roadway to see if there's extra capacity in the roadway where we wouldn't need a travel lane or if it's if it's at its maximum capacity. Well, as many of you live in this area, or all of you live in this area probably, you recognize that the section of Hohen between Yulupa and Cyprus is definitely near its capacity. Not all throughout the entire time of the day, but definitely during the AM and PM peak periods, we see congestion there and we recognize that. As you travel east, uh, this section of Hohen is at about 15,000 vehicles a day, and it sees much less of that congestion. Although you do see it um, at the intersection. So whenever you have an intersection, a signalized intersection, or a stop controlled intersection, you will see uh, delays um, just due to those operations. And I'll get into a little bit more of this intersection at Hohen and, and Summerfield and how we're gonna address that um, with this project. So north of Summerfield, of Hohen on Summerfield, um, we have a volume currently of about 13,500 a day. And south of Hohen, it's down to 8,400 a day. And all these segments of roadways, uh, except for the segment south of Hohen, have a two-lane with two-lane facility with a center turn lane. So as we move south down Summerfield into um, past Carissa down to Bethards, um, the the volume drops as you would expect as you're getting further down into the neighborhood where people can peel off and go into the different neighborhoods along the way. Um, so this segment of roadway is at about 6,000 vehicles a day. And Bethards is at about 7,000 vehicles a day. Yalupa, this southern section up to about Creekside is at 6,700 trips a day. And then the northern section of Yalupa um, up to Hohen is at about almost 13,000 vehicles a day. So we don't just look only at the vehicle count when we're looking at if a roadway can uh, manage or sustain a um, lane reduction. We also look at the number of intersections that are along that that have stop controls or signals. And in this segment, the only stop controls are at Bethards and at at Hohen, way up here at the top, which is off the screen here. Um, and what that tells us is that we aren't going to have locations along there where, where we'll have more induced delay. So that's a very much a positive in this in this segment of the roadway. The other thing that we look at along um, or that we looked at along this segment of roadway was the number of collisions that occurred. So we looked uh, ten years back. Um, to see what type of collisions were occurring and have been occurring over the years. So in a 10 year span, um, we have 13 reported collisions. That doesn't mean that's all that was there. That just means that's what was reported. And uh, five of those were related to speed, um, unsafe speed. Four of those were DUI related. One was a pedestrian collision. One was a bicycle collision. And then two of them were right-of-way collisions, which means someone was either turning left and didn't yield the right-of-way, or someone was pulling out from the side street and didn't yield the right-of-way, and there was a collision. So moving on to what we're proposing for the striping. So in this segment of the roadway, um, the segment between Hohen and Carissa, 
we're proposing, as I was mentioned before, a lane reduction. And we're proposing that uh, we install, instead of a five foot bike lane, a seven foot bike lane. One of the reasons for that is it provides more comfort for the cyclists. A five foot bike lane, including, and that includes the curb and gutter. So you really only have three feet of asphalt area to ride on is, is actually pr pretty constrained. So a seven foot bike lane really helps give the bicycle a little more comfortable feel um, riding in the roadway. The buffer also adds for a, um, some protection and so a, a greater feel for the cyclists, and not only cyclists, but the pedestrians who are walking on the sidewalk. By pushing that vehicle uh, further away from the, the curb, um, giving them that extra buffer zone makes them feel much more comfortable. And even when you're walking along the sidewalk, as I was mentioning, um, there's less noise. It's You could talk to someone who's next to you because you don't have a car going right by you. It's much more comfortable. But one of the main reasons we're looking at doing this is to help with the speeding issue um, that's been reported. So by putting the traffic into a single lane, you no longer have um, people trying to pass one another to try to get ahead of one another. Um, it's, it's much more constrained. And we've seen in Santa Rosa and in, throughout the nation, it's, it's been proven that as you constrain that travel way from, a, from two lanes down to one lane, you do get slower speeds. And that's really one of the main goals that we're looking to achieve out here. Excuse me. So one of the other things that we are looking at is the pedestrian crossing and that activity. So when you have uh, two lanes of vehicles approaching a crosswalk, you have a situation that's called a multi-threat condition. And a multi-threat condition is um, a type of collision that occurs when you have a multiple lane approach. So you'd have car A in this situation approaching the crosswalk with the pedestrian starting to cross in the, in the downward direction in this case. And car B is approaching um, at speed and it, car A is blocking the pedestrian. So car B is not able to see that pedestrian and they are probably unsure why car A is stopping. So that creates a situation where car B then approaches at probably a, a, you know, a moderate rate of speed and could potentially have a, a collision with the pedestrian at this point. This also occurs and we've seen this occur where car B is behind car A, car A begins to stop and car B doesn't understand why they're stopping because they don't see the pedestrian. The pedestrian is entirely blocked by the vehicle. Car B comes around that vehicle and then there's a collision right at this location. This is a very real type of uh, collision scenario that we actually, we've um, had collisions like this in Santa Rosa. Um, and changing this to a single lane in each direction basically eliminates that from occurring, which is a great enhancement for the pedestrian crossings. So as we move south down Carissa um, towards Bethards, um, in the southbound direction, we're really not proposing a, a huge change. Uh, it still would be a single lane in that southbound direction. However, the buffer in the bike lane would swap positions. Um, in the current condition, as you will know, the bike lane is adjacent to the travel lane. And in the proposed condition, we move that bike lane over to uh, the curbside, creating that buffer between the vehicle and the bike. The only difference to that would be um, down at, near the Bethard's um, intersection where the parking is allowed. Um, so where the parking is allowed, the parking would then be swapped again with this uh, bike lane. The bike lane would be pushed back over to um, near the, the drive lane um, as it is today. So we would not be proposing any loss of parking. Uh, the northbound direction would basically just mirror the southbound direction with a single lane in the northbound with the buffer and the bike lane. So I mentioned towards the beginning of the presentation that I wanted to look a little bit closer at the, um, the intersection of Hoenn and Summerfield. And if you look at this intersection from basically this portion to the north, so this, this is Hoenn and this is Hoenn that goes over to um, the neighborhood. North is in the left side of the, the, the view, field, field of view here. Um, so if you look at the intersection from about this location to the north, there, there isn't any modifications being done to the intersection. And that's 
entirely by design. We want to keep the efficiency and the effectiveness of uh, the signalized intersection so that we aren't um, compromising and creating any additional delay for the drivers or the pedestrians or anyone who's using this intersection. And if we went down to a single lane at the intersection, then we would be doing that. But this intersection operates well in its current capacity. And by um, expanding this to leaving this at two lanes on the approaches, you could still get the same number of vehicles through in the same cycle time that we currently have at this intersection. So we wouldn't be incurring any additional delay here. What is different though, is that we, we merged the, the southbound direction um, immediately following the intersection. And um, instead of doing that at, at down near Brookshire, what this does is it helps control the speed and getting cars in a single file well before um, Park Trail or Stonehenge before those intersections. So we can control the speed for a longer period of time. What it also does is it merges the vehicles over prior to the bus stop, which is located right about here. So by merging the vehicles over prior to the bus stop, you there will never be a bus stop that's in the way and impeding the traffic as you're approaching it, um, as they're uh, loading and unloading pedestrians at that location. So that's a, a, a great factor for our transit system as well. So as we move over to the intersection of um, Brookshire, Brookshire Circle and Carissa on Summerfield, again, north is in this direction to the left. Um, you'll notice a lot of modifications at this intersection. So I'll start with the approach lane. So the approach lane would be coming off the, the page here to the left um, in a single file with vehicles. If a vehicle was going to turn right, they would pull over here into this right drop area and then turn right down onto Brookshire. So we're providing a uh, ample space for vehicles to get out of the travel way. Again, the intent here is not to um, imp impede traffic. The intent is just to keep the flow moving, but also to control the speed. So if someone's turning right, we don't want that person to stay in the into the main travel lane to turn right because they will slow people down behind them and the people behind them will get impatient and we don't want to make people impatient and angry because someone is turning or trying to make a turning movement. So they pull over to the right and they get out of the, the travel lane and they can make their turn. This is a, a very similar uh, theme throughout the entire length of the roadway. So currently, currently there's there would be two lanes of travel here, um, but now with just one, we have a drop area again for people to swing over, turn right, get out of the way of the moving traffic. And we're retaining this left turn lane to a left turn lane the entire way. So people who are turning left can move over and get out of the turn lane, which opens up the through travel lane for people just to continue their moderate speed throughout the corridor. Um, some of the other improvements we're looking at at this intersection is actually shifting the crosswalk to the north side, which we've actually done some improvements there already. We've installed the flasher at this location that's um, pedestrian activated. And we have added the crosswalk at this location to the north. The visibility at this north side of the intersection is much greater than the visibility at the south side of this intersection. And that's uh, primarily due to the, the fence and the tree that used to be located here near this, this six foot mark. So with the removal of that tree and with, by pushing this traffic over even further to the center of the roadway, the sight distance at this location um, will be better than it is actually even today. So to finish up, um, I wanted to go over a couple locations that we've had success throughout the city in implementing um, lane reductions. And I'm just gonna show two of the most recent. We've, I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna list a couple that we've done because we've done this for several years throughout the city. Um, we've done Calistoga Road, Sonoma. Uh, recently, we've done E Street um, in the downtown. We've done Third Street in the downtown and um, further to the towards Dutton. We've done Mission. Um, I know I should have written down, um, but there's been a host of them. Well, Yulupa, Bethards, Summerfield to the north, and Hohen are all examples of other locations where we've had four lane facilities that have been reduced to two lane facilities with a center turn lane have been very successful. So here at West Third, this is the picture before we did any of the modifications of striping. And after we did the modifications, this is an example of where they didn't have a bike lane. 
we installed the bike lane with a buffer and this is a seven foot bike lane. So this gives you a gauge of how wide that seven foot is um, for the width of a bike lane. The next most recent location we've done, and I'm just gonna list two for examples. Oh, I wanted to go back on Third Street, the ADT or the average daily volume on Third Street, just for comparisons, um, is about 11,000 vehicles a day. On Hopper here, it's about 9,000 vehicles a day currently. And when the counts were done back in 2018, which was after, after the fires in this area, it was about um, 7,400. So here's a before picture um, of the four lane facility with the tur turn lanes. And then here's a picture of it as it is currently today with um, two travel lanes, a center turn lane, a large buffer and bike lanes. So at this time, um, I want to open it up to address questions, and I'll ask Mary Lou now to um, review how our public participation participation um, can happen by asking some live questions. Mary Lou. Thank you, Rob. Once the facilitator has called for public questions or comments, as host, I will announce for anyone wishing to ask a question or comment to raise their hand in Zoom. For individuals wishing to participate in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. As host, I will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised. I will unmute your microphone so you may ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, your hand will be lowered and your microphone muted so your question can receive a response. If you are calling in, I have renamed you to caller in the last four digits of your phone number. If you signed in with a series of numbers, I have renamed you to resident with the last four numbers. Great, thanks Mary Lou. So are we ready to begin? Yes, we are. Um, the first speaker is James McAdler, followed by Lynn Carlisle and Jay Liscom. Uh, Mr. McAdler, I have allowed your permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm James McAdler. I live here in Santa Rosa, uh, very close to uh, Summerfield Road. Um, the, the comment I have is on the uh, intersection of Summerfield and Hohen. Uh, I make that turn, uh, it's a left turn going uh, south on uh, Summerfield, uh, turning into on to Hohen into that neighborhood. And uh, quite often what happens is if I'm in that uh, turn lane and, and stopped, uh, the tra traffic that comes uh, from Hohen and makes the uh, right I'm sorry, the left turn going north on Summerfield from Hohen, okay, is um, often uh, very close to the car because the stop line there on Summerfield is too close to the uh, intersection. I, I hope I'm making myself clear. I'm not sure about that. I completely understand what you're saying and actually, yeah, go ahead, continue. Uh, but uh, if if the maybe if the stop line was moved uh, north, uh, what uh, three to five feet, we wouldn't have that trouble of being so close to the cars that are turning from Hone onto Summerfield. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, James. We actually have received that complaint in the past, and we have addressed that in our our plan moving forward. We we were going to be pulling that stop bar back about 10 feet. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hello? She should call you. Mary Lou, you're muted. I don't know if you called the next person. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Lynn Carlisle, I've enabled your permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, it's Richard Carlisle. I'm at my wife's computer, but <laughs> hi, Rob, you did a great job. Uh, I 
echo what the last person just said about the left turn lane in onto Hone uh, as you're going southbound on Summerfield. That is really dangerous. And anything you can do to move those lanes over to the west or move it, move the stop back, that would really help that intersection. That is really been dangerous through the years. And uh, I totally agree with what you're proposing. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to have four lanes on Summerfield Road when you have three quarters of the road already at two lanes. And uh, it makes it much safer for pedestrians, much safer for getting out um, onto the street when you have these buffers. And uh, it, it just makes a lot of sense. And <clears throat> when, when, when there's an emergency or fire, I would assume that the roadway would expand in an emergency uh, so that we don't hinder or put bollards up anywhere in the street section so that in emergencies we could get double lanes out. Uh, but that's that's a unusual situation, I realize. But uh, I think what you're doing is great. So continue on. I, I just want that one intersection like the previous uh, member said. Great, thank you, Richard. And we have actually um, received the request, that similar request um, regarding evacuations. And I'm working on some type of messaging with our um, outreach coordinator to actually look at this kind of, kind of throughout the city where we have um, some of the constrained lanes, whether we could use the bike lane and the lane to help double up for some evacuations. One of the things I would like to point out though about the evacuations is that our, our fire department does a great job in notifying people well in advance of the time that they need to get out, understanding that it's going to take a long time to evacuate. So that evacuation time is taken into consideration when they're giving those orders. Not to say that you shouldn't wait to evacuate, but they understand it's gonna take a long time. So they're not waiting till the last second to, to get people evacuated. But, but thank you, I appreciate the comments. Our next speaker is Jay Liskam, followed by Vincent Hoagland and LLR. Mr. Liskam, please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Yes, hi Rob, Ross Liskam. Um, ever good to follow Dick Carlisle as an engineer, but I guess I got stuck with that. Um, I've got a couple of comments and then a question or two. Uh, a lot of us that live in Brookshire Circle area, really supports existing lane structure and want it left alone. Um, secondly, you've eliminated an actual right turn lane into Brookshire. We really feel it's important to retain a right turn lane that's dedicated to Brookshire instead of jockeying around all these crossing lines you're going to do. Um, the speeding issue you mentioned, um, what's been recorded? I mean, I see that five people got tickets over 10 years. That's two every, or whatever, a couple every two years. Um, you know, the ones that are doing the speeding are not necessarily uh, the working environment. They're kids in Benna Valley. And we do our best to uh, try, try to retain their ability to act jerkies, if you will. Uh, if you want to have some revenue for the city, send the cops out here on anytime after 10.30 at night, because they like to spend donuts out in Summerfield. The uh, pedestrian condition, again, you made a comment about, uh, is, was that one accident in the last 10 years in a crosswalk? Um, and then to the follow up, now that you have this blinking flashing lights here um, on Brookshire Carissa intersection, to me that negates the concern about feathering down to one lane where there's traffic that's gonna buzz by without knowing there's a pedestrian in there. And, uh, you know, I, you know that I've, I've voiced my displeasure. We talked about this over a year and a half ago. Uh, you had committed to a community meeting before any plans were done. And now we have a full set of plans, work has already started. And it really feels like this is uh, the way it is that it really has no difference what the community wants to 
give you their input or suggestions on. Uh, again, thank you for your time. Thank you, Ross. And we wouldn't be holding the meeting if we didn't want to hear what the community have to say, and I do value your input. So thank you for that. Our next speaker is Vincent Hoagland, followed by LLR and Rita Costello. Mr. Hoagland, I've enabled your speaking permission. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Mr. Hoagland. I think he's muted. I've prompted yeah. you. Okay, there we go. Uh, my name is Vincent Hoagland and um, I'm a bicyclist. So I was very interested in what Rob, you were saying about the, uh, the bike lanes. Um, I was not clear on what was going to happen to the bike lanes, especially after the previous uh, caller commented about uh, the Brookshire Carissa, um, where cars would be moving over through the bike lane in order to make a right turn, say, onto uh, to Brookshire. Is that correct? Yes, yeah, so similar to where you have a bike lane that's adjacent to um, the curb lane and you have a through movement, uh, you would, yes, you would be turning right over, over or You'd be merging or yielding to the bike and then turning right into the circle. Right. And will, will the bike lanes be at that point, at least be uh, painted green so that people recognize them a little bit easier? We could act, we could add that to our, we, yeah, could, we could add that, that comment in there. I think that that really helps. So anyway, I, I think that this has got some great potential and I really appreciate what you're doing. Thanks. Our next speaker is LLR, followed by Rita Costello and Chris Petrus. LLR, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, my name is Laura Rogers. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, so I had, uh, you can disregard the messages I left today. I had a couple calls into you to ask these questions, but uh, I was able to clear my schedule to come to the meeting. So thank you. Um, my concern is that, first of all, I think it's a, it's a good idea. I don't know that it's 100% necessary to slow the speeders down, but uh, I think overall the calming is good. I agree with the last caller about brightly painted bike lines are a huge help to drivers um, wherever you can do them. That's citywide, that's not specific to this project. And finally, has there been any discussion about the intersection of Park Trail and Summerfield and the fact that there's already a crosswalk there, a preschool on the corner? Obviously, I live in the neighborhood up the hill, and it's already at certain times of day somewhat difficult to turn, especially left, but in either direction. Um, and, you know, just seeing how things back up on Hohen when they went to the single lane. Um, all the way, you know, sometimes from Montgomery High School all the way back to, to Summerfield at certain times of day. I'm just kind of dreading getting out of my neighborhood once this happens, if everything's down to one lane and maybe a three-way stop sign at Park Trail and Summerfield would be in order. Um, so that was it. Those were my questions and comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll address a, a couple of them real quick. Uh, a three-way stop at, at Park Trail would add some significant delay there. Um, I understand with the pedestrian crossing that that would you know be an easier place for pedestrians to cross. Um, prior to installing any type of um, stop control, we look at the warrants to see if uh, warrants are met for something like that. I, my, my, although we haven't run the warrants there, my gut is that it would not meet come close to meeting the, a stop warrant at that location. Um, and you mentioned turning left. I'm not sure if you meant turning left out of Park Trail or turning left on the park trail. I don't know if you could clarify that for me real quick. Are you still there? Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. One minute. Hi, uh, yes, yeah, sorry to clarify, turning left from park, tra park trail going southbound on Summerfield. Oh, perfect, great, thank you. Okay, so it, it may actually be easier with a single lane. Um, uh, of cars approaching versus two lanes. Some, I mean, it's easier to judge. 
I will say, um, on the, uh, the approaching vehicles and where the gaps are where that occurs. So thank you. Our next speaker is Rita Costello. Let me find her. One moment. Oh, there she is. Rita, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and ask your question or comment. Rita Costello. Okay, we'll move on to the next speaker and come back to Rita. Our next speaker is Chris Petrus. Chris, I've enabled your speaking permission. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and ask your question or provide your comment. Hi, yeah, my name is Chris Petrus and uh, I live in the Brookshire uh, Circle neighborhood. And uh, I've had experience just crossing over at that Carissa um, Summerfield intersection a lot. Um, and I gotta say, it's, it's, it's scary every time I've done it. Um, and so I really, really appreciate the, what you're doing to undertake uh, both the speeding aspect and in making that crosswalk safer by moving it to the uh, other side of, of uh, Carissa. So um, I just wanted to ask about the about the flasher itself, and and the con my concern is always that that car coming down from south from Summerfield um, and going around that turn and being able to see that that flasher. Um, it, as that, um, can you tell me a little bit about the flasher and how um, visible that will be from that from that pathway? Sure. So we have the flashers that are installed there currently are um, front and back. So and, and the idea of the flasher is really just to grab the attention of the of the motorist that something's something's different, right? I mean, motorists obviously should be looking for pedestrians and pedestrians should be looking for motorists. The idea of the flasher is to add that extra bit of warning to let them know that hey, someone's in the crosswalk crossing. So we put them on both the front and back on both sides of the street so that there you can see them from both directions regardless of um, of where, where you are around the curve. Thank you. We'll try our next speaker, Rita Costello. Rita, I've enabled your permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Okay, that's not working. So we are going to move on to Mike Raymond followed by Jeremy Brott. One moment. One moment. I think somebody put their hand back down. We're going to move forward with Jeremy Brott. Jeremy, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Yeah, uh, my name is Jeremy Brott. I live off of Carissa, um, also a trustee with the Bennett Valley Schools. And first of all, thank you for putting in the left turn lane in Carissa back in 2007. Um, that's been a, a big help. Um, and um, I support uh, the traffic calming and, uh, you know, there isn't often a problem with the uh, speeding, but where there is, um, you know, it's, uh, it's good to avoid, um, especially with the uh, school crossing there at um, Horseshoe. Um, I want to, I sort of had a similar question to the bike lane um, on when the, it gets to Carissa in the direction. Um, I know in other intersections, the, there is sort of the merge and then the bike lane still exists between the right turn lane and the main traffic lane. Um, and so hopefully that would uh, um, be the case um, for the bike lanes when coming to Carissa from both directions. Um, I also support the green striping um, in there as well. Um, and 
just a, a note on the evacuation. Um, in the glass fire, um, and we had time um, to evacuate, uh, which was good, but uh, the intersection at uh, Hone and Summerfield was heavily impacted by traffic coming out of uh, Oakmont. So even a sort of really ahead of, ahead of time of an uh, official uh, notice, it still took uh, probably 10, 15 minutes to get through that intersection, which in that situation was fine, but um, in a more urgent situation could be an issue just to um, pass that information along to planning for that. Great, thank you, Jeremy. Okay, I'm gonna try Rita Costello one more time. Rita, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Rita Costello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I totally agree with the proposal, the, um, the, the striping, the, the, the you know, attempt to, to slow traffic down and create more safety for pedestrians. Um, my husband has stopped walking uh, uh, because of the, the dangers uh, along Summerfield Road. Uh, you know, he'll, he'll drive his car to somewhere else. But, but anyhow, um, the, uh, so I, 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 I really um, uh, appreciate that and also the concerns for the evacuation. Um, one thing this, this, I think the second speaker spoke about was donuts. And I know this is not probably the place, um, you know, to talk about it, but uh, I, I would, like to um, also agree that something has to be done about speeding and, and people doing donuts in the middle of those intersections along Summerfield Road. Um, it's, it's dangerous, of course, for anyone that comes upon them and as well as the drivers themselves, but the noise um, level is, is pretty outrageous as well. So that was all, thank you. Thanks, Rita. And unfortunately, I don't have a, a fix for donuts yet. Um, I, I've actually seen some um, some attempts at that that the county is doing in some locations. Um, I'm not sure if those can be integrated into this. It, and not not to condone it, but I mean, or you know, approve it. But we have this issue in several intersections throughout the city, and and I know the police are working on it. Um, and I wish I had a, uh, an easy solution for it, but I, uh, I don't, so I'm sorry. Our next speaker is Keith Woods. Keith, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Uh, am I on now? Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. I'm, I'm Keith Woods, um, live on Carissa Avenue uh, and have for the past year and a half, but prior to that, I lived for um, 12 years just off of Devonshire and uh, Stonehenge. Then I moved to Fountain Grove for a, year, a while and the years and then Montecito Heights. And you're about to make some changes. I just have trouble understanding uh, are necessary to maybe my favorite road in all of Santa Rosa. Uh, no offense, Mr. Sprinkle, but every time I hear I'm from government and I'm here to help, I start to tremble. I don't know who asked for this change. I'll take a wild guess that it's bicycle advocates who tend to get pretty much whatever they want when they ask for it in terms of road changes. And I get frustrated at this. Uh, my question is who, who requested this change? Or do you guys have a lot of time on your hands and figure this would be a nice project? I mean, what's the genesis of this? Uh, I couldn't these funds, and I saw the budget for it that you were kind enough to send out, couldn't these funds be better spent on the really crappy roads that we've got throughout Santa Rosa? I, I just don't understand it. Uh, based on your math, I, I might have gotten it wrong, but I thought there were 8,000 cars a day uh, somewhere on Summerfield Road. Uh, pardon me if I, my number's off. <laughs> But at 8,000 a day over a year's time, that's a little under 3 million uh, uh, cars or vehicles using uh, that roadway. 
a three million in a year and you're citing a handful of incidents as reason to spend this kind of money and take a road that I, I hear what some of the, uh, the supporters of your changes have said, but I'm sorry, after living back there for a year and a half, it's still one of the great road segments in Santa Rosa in my mind. And, and I, I just don't understand uh, why all this is being done when the money could be far better used elsewhere. Uh, I'll go back to my question. Who requested the change and what is, what? and I'll add, what uh, are the specific uh, speeding statistics that you can cite that have made that a problem uh, other than uh, anecdotal from some people on the call? Great, thank you, Mr. Woods. So the changes are being actually suggested um, due to the comments that we've received over the years. Um, it's not one, group of people, it's, it's mainly the group of residents who, who live in the area who have told us that Summerfield Road is a racetrack and that, you know, people speed on it all the time. And we've had, like I said, in the beginning, we looked through our call logs and reviewed, reviewed those to see what kind of comments we had. Those are the, that's the input that we were getting from prior calls. So it wasn't just one person or one group of people that were calling us asking for it. it it wasn't the bike community it wasn't the pedestrian community it was the community so that i hope that answers that question the funding side of it is as i mentioned at the beginning we're looking at doing um, a slurry seal project which is one of the most cost effective treatments you can do on a street to keep a good street in good condition so that's our goal we want to preserve the infrastructure that we've already invested so much money in um, a, an overlay is about eight times the cost of a slurry project and a reconstruction is about 13 times the cost of a slurry project. So we could basically do one eighth or one thirteenth of uh, the area that we're doing um, with one of those overlays or uh, reconstruction projects than we can do with a slurry. So we're getting a great bang for our buck um, by preserving the good roads in good conditions. As far as the striping goes, um, there's very little cost um, increase with this proposed striping. We, we have to restripe the road regardless of, of what the configuration is. Um, changing the configuration to a one lane in each direction versus a two lane in each direction, I think I calculated the difference is around $3,600 for the extra materials to, to make those changes on this segment of roadway. It's very low cost uh, modification for, the, for that change. So um, I think I answered the two questions you have. If I didn't, feel free to, to um, merely if you could let him speak, let me know if I missed something, I'd be happy to, to follow up on it. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, is it public record to find out uh, what the complaints have been and how many they have been? Is that public records uh, a request that would be required? Yes, you, you can absolutely request that. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Nancy Persons, followed by Thea Hensel and Greg Martin. Nancy, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and ask your question or provide your comment. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, first, I wanted to really thank you for this presentation because it's so informative. I don't know if you were doing these before the pandemic, but this is great. Um, I am a resident living down near the bottom of Summerfield. I drive on Summerfield in my car almost every single day. And now I'm sorry I haven't called in to report my concerns because I don't think I ever get in my car without seeing somebody speeding by crazily on Summerfield. So it's very disturbing. Um, I'm also a former bike commuter. Prior to the Tubbs fire, I lived over off of Sinead Road. Um, and I would like to resume being a bike commuter. So I really wanna applaud your decision to make that bike lane actually wide enough to be safe and keep bicyclists out of the gutter. Um, I'd also like to remind other people listening to this that when you're a bike commuter, you're not in your car. So that's one less car contributing to those 8,000 cars on the road. Um, I think some people uh, aren't being mindful of the data. Uh, I think 8,000 cars a day is actually a lot of cars if you compare it to some of our other roads. Um, I do want to recommend uh, what the other caller said about painting uh, 
the maybe not the entire bikeway green. They do that in southern Spain. It's fantastic. It's really hard to miss the bike lanes. Um, but to please at least make the, the section where um, cars are going to be crossing over through the bike lane to make their turns, uh, to definitely paint those green. I live south of Bethards, and I think you've done that there at the corner of Bethards and Summerfield. It's excellent. And then finally, um, just a plea in the future. I don't know what the plan is. I work at the JC, and I've noticed it's very difficult to go diagonally from north to south, south to north, um, over to the JC area. There are some fine bike lanes going uh, west to east and north to south, but there's always a gap somewhere between, uh, uh, like on Sonoma and Hoenn. There are bike lanes, but they always seem to disappear or kind of dissolve for a few blocks and that's keeping me from riding my bike to work. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Our next speaker is Thea Hensel followed by Greg Martin. Thea, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, my name is Thea Hensel and I just want to say how much I really appreciate looking at uh, cutting down the speedway that we have on Summerfield. I live right near Hoenn and Yalupa, and I also do a lot of walking around the neighborhood. So thinking that there will be traffic calming and, and safer places for bikes is, is really exciting for me. One of the questions I have is uh, you had made a comment about the intersection at Hohen and Summerfield not being changed because of concerns that it would slow down traffic passing through it. And it seems to me that that intersection, um, right now the wait time there is less than it is at the intersection of Yalupa and Hohen. And obviously I don't have a stopwatch, so I haven't timed it. So this is just maybe a figment of my imagination, but I would really like that intersection looked at again to see if it can be consolidated down to a single lane with just one turn lane in it. Because one of the things that I think would be really important is we will be able to um, have cross traffic in the middle of, uh, of Summerfield when the Greenway bike lanes are in. And I think it would be great if cyclists could have easy access to the Greenway because that's going to get some of the cyclists off Hohen and actually some of the cyclists off Sonoma as well. I know that the road goes down into one lane there, but it's sort of right in the middle of the Greenway. So it would be wonderful if you could just revisit that a little bit. And I also wanna say, yes, I'm cheering everybody saying nice bright green striping for uh, the cyclists. Thank you very much. Great, thank you, Hia. Our next speaker is Greg Martin, followed by Marion Mason or Mason. Greg, I have enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Greg, are you there? Uh, how about now? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. My name is Greg Martin. I live off of uh, Carissa, um, Carissa Corp. I've been here over 20 years. And before that, I lived uh, on the corner of Horseshoe and Summerfield for 10 years. So I've lived specifically in the neighborhood for over 30 years and in Santa Rosa for over 50. Um, Rob, I want to say thank you, first of all, for the presentation. I think it was extremely informative and really well put together. And in fact, you answered the majority of my questions and changed my, my uh, perspective somewhat. So um, I, I think that's a good thing. In general, I'll say that I'm against the um, restriping as it's being proposed for these reasons. Um, primarily, I feel like, you know, if you go back 40 years uh, when the neighborhood was, was subdivided and put in, traffic engineers, much like yourself, got together and decided 
what type of infrastructure and streets are required to service the community. And at the time, they obviously built a four lane, two in each direction uh, boulevard, if you will. When I lived on Horseshoe and in Summerfield, uh, back when I went to high school, um, there was actually two lanes in both directions, went all the way out. And um, of course, we know southbound, they changed that to the one lane. And I think that's been fine. But my feeling is this, all around the city for the last few years, you've been taking all the major, you know, um, um, thoroughfares to move people across the city, uh, Sonoma Avenue and, and all the ones that you, you've listed. And you've reduced them to the point where in most cases, I don't think it's very, you know, it hasn't impacted a whole lot. It has slow traffic down and it's made things safer. But during commute hours is my biggest concern. If you try to come out of our neighborhood and hit uh, Summerfield and Holland any time in the morning during when kids are trying to get to school or people are trying to get to work, as one caller said earlier, sometimes the traffic can be stopped from, um, you know, all the way uh, up at, um, uh, you know, near Montgomery High School, all the way down Summerfield uh, or Hohen back to, uh, to Summerfield. And in fact, um, I know that that change slow traffic down and i'll bet you the people that live on hohen are much appreciative i don't know that it's a whole lot safer i've been rear-ended twice in the last 10 years on hohen because of the single lane stop and go bumper to bumper traffic both times it was in the morning slow speeds non-injury um but my just my concern is you know how we move traffic around the city um I'm a cyclist myself, so I do uh, support, you know, the bike lanes when they can be, uh, you know, put in place. Um, but I feel like what's happening is we're making big structural changes um, based on what I call the tail wagging the dog. You know, uh, uh, it's to serve a few people when we've got a few people are speeding um, and maybe we need to step up traffic enforcement. Uh, I do know there are people that like to, to, to drive fast on Summerfield, um, but I don't know that, that it's a prolific problem. I drive it every day, several times a day, um, and I don't see that. Um, so with that said, I'll, I'll end with this one question, and, and hopefully you can factor this into your project. One of the concerns I do have, though, when we go to the one lane is, is uh, even though you're going to have some dedicated turn lanes, for example, now, Northbound coming down Summerfield, if I want to turn back into Carissa, there, as you've proposed, there's going to be a, a short turn lane there to make that right turn into Carissa. Um, but it's illegal to, to drive in a bike lane. And I've actually seen people ticketed, for example, up on Hohen. I don't think that they, the, the right hand turn lane needs to be longer because people who are trying to kids and parents trying to turn in to go to Montgomery High School in the morning, they've been ticketed because now they're driving in the bike lane, trying to get right when all the other traffic's backed up, trying to go up 12. The same issue I'm concerned about coming down Summerfield um, is, you know, are those turn lanes going to be long enough to accommodate slowing down and being able to turn without somebody right on your butt right now? The person can simply, when I turn on my signal to turn into my neighborhood, the person just merges out into the left lane and continues on by. Um, so hopefully that's something that, that you can factor in. Um, you know, I do support the safety considerations um, and I, I thank you for the work you're doing. Uh, I just wish that years ago, uh, folks like yourself would have you know, thought about how they're gonna move traffic around the city you know better than I do, we're stuck with the demographics and the geography that we have in the city. Um, makes it really tough. It's like trying to put a square peg in a round hole. And uh, that's what we're plagued with. So anyway, thank you. Thanks, Greg. Uh, you, you brought up a great point. And um, in that if, if I was going to build this road today, it would not be a four lane facility. It would be a three lane facility. And um, I think the luxury we have with it being a wider street now is that even if we do make this change, this change is a change that's made with paint. 
it's it's something that can be changed again into something different in the future so it, it's not that you're locked into this necessarily forever. We still have flexibility moving forward. And if in the future there's a different mode of transportation that we need to accommodate because that is the next mode, we have flexibility. So um, I'm hoping that helps. Thanks. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marion, followed by Laura Rogers. Just one moment. Marion, I have enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Hi, my name is Marion Mason. Um, I live off of Hillsboro, which is off of Bethards and Summerfield effectively. Um, and I'm just echoing some of the other comments that have been made um, and um, I have to say, I came in a little bit late to the meeting, so I don't know what your changes are related around that particular intersection. But what I can tell you is that um, donuts occur there on an ongoing basis, um, not just uh, after 10 p.m., which is there seems to be <laughs> a two or three different times of the evening that um, I guess the kids get off of work that uh, it really gets hit hard. Um, but you know, when your bedroom backs to that uh, particular intersection, you hear it all night long. And um, <clears throat> I would say that the speed going down Bethard's, um, so I think what people tend to do is they're trying to get their zero to 60 uh, going down Bethard's as quickly as possible. Um, and, or as we've seen um, down even down Summerfield to the end of Summerfield. And as we know, there has been a crash um, at the end of Summerfield um, within the last year or so um, that didn't end well. Um, but anyway, um, one of the questions I would have is, have you thought about putting in a circle at Bethard's? Um, and like I said, I did come in late to the meeting, but somehow I think you're just restriping and not really putting in any circles. Um, but thinking about a circle or something that would slow down the speed of that traffic as they come into that intersection. Um, I applaud all the changes that you are proposing um, at this point because uh, I do like the idea of slowing down the traffic along Summerfield. In my opinion, Summerfield should not be an artery. It is a, an edge of city street and not an artery. So um, thank you for, for proposing those changes. I run along uh, that street almost on a daily basis. So thank you. Thanks, Mary. Our next speaker is Laura Rogers, followed by Mike, Mike G. Let's call it Mike G. Laura, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please uh, offer your question or comment. Hi, thanks. Um, apologize for double dipping here. I just wanted to, um, echo the other colors about the donuts spinning out and wondering if um, the police do something like this or could be on future calls like this to talk about problem intersections. Um, you know, obviously everybody that drives these intersections daily knows, and, and I've called the non-emergency number a couple of times, you know, a couple of intersections by my office over on um, Cleveland by Coddington Mall where, you know, dozens of people regularly run blatantly red lights over you know all the time and there's never um a traffic cop there to you know they could probably fund the whole city budget writing tickets over there so anyway just a sort of a general suggestion question maybe to have a traffic officer on these calls or for them to set up their own thanks oh and i like the roundabout idea too i i wish we had more of those in general thank you great thank you and and i will forward um the police sergeant, um, the comments about the donuts in the, on Summerfield. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike G. Mike, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your comment or question. Hi, my name is Mike. I actually live on Carissa and Summerfield and right in that neighborhood. And the last speaker actually kind of hit it on the dot. Um, just more, more uh, enforcement from police, uh, not only during the day, but obviously in the evening is 
when uh, speed picks up and donuts and so forth. So just if we can get some more enforcement on Summerfield, especially right around that bus stop, um, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. We have no more hands up. So if anyone else has a question, please raise your hand now. Rob, I'm, oops, I have one hand, one moment. Sandy with an I. Sandy, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you choose and offer your question or comment. Sandy. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. My name is, oops, My, I'm Sandra. Yes. Do you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry. I live on Bethards in Summerfield, just one house from Summerfield. And um, I'm retired, so I have an opportunity to see who's doing the donuts. Uh, I've had a couple of policemen come to my uh, door and say, have I seen people doing donuts? And I have. And I, have, I want you to know they're not all teenagers. A lot of them are adult males, I'm sorry to say, in various cars from real nice ones to not so nice ones. And, and they do um, have that problem of making the turn from Summerfield, uh, like out by uh, near the golf course and then coming down and doing their big donut on the Summerfield Bethard's circle area there. So it's, it can be really spooky for anybody who's out walking um, that you might get hit even during the daytime. So I, I don't know how to stop that, but um, the, um, it, is, it is a real problem. But I appreciate what you guys are doing. Um, the reducing things down to one lane, I think it's a good idea, frankly. But let's face it, people drive in the um, bicycle lane and they will be driving in the buffer lane too. Uh, unfortunately, to make right-hand turns and the like. And I don't know how you can stop people from wanting to get a, get home quickly or get to work quickly. I, that's a problem that'll be here forever, I'm afraid. But that's my comment. Thank you, Sandy. Our next speaker is David Lightfoot. David, I've enabled your speaking permissions. Please state your full name for the record if you so choose and offer your question or comment. Yeah, my name is David Lightfoot, and I've lived in San Rosa since the first grade and commuted mainly by bicycle uh, my whole life, including over 20 years from this neighborhood off of uh, Park Trail off of Summerfield. And I, I can tell you from personal experience that people speed regularly down Summerfield, particularly at school time when the mothers are going to get their kids and all that sort of stuff. But my, my comment is, um, First of all, I like the idea of a uh, circle, turning circle at the Bethard Summerfield intersection. I think that would work well there and eliminate, structurally eliminate the really problem because the police aren't going to be, let's be realistic, they're not going to be out here enforcing that once the hue and cry disappears and the kids will come back. And then the second thing is, I wonder if we could have a if we do change lanes, could we have a bus stop opposite park trail? Because you, you would have space and you wouldn't be holding up traffic by putting a bus stop there. And it saved me walking down another five minutes to get down to the nearest bus stop. I will check in with our transit department about that. They, they have specific guidelines that they use, but I'll let them know that that's a request. Okay, thank you. I see no other hands raised. Are there any other questions? Rob, I'm not seeing any other hands at this time. Okay, uh, with no further questions, I'd like to express my appreciation and thank everyone from the public for participating tonight. Also, thank you, Mary Lou, for participating and, and hosting the meeting. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and provide your feedback. It's very valuable to us. So I wanna thank you for I know time is valuable and, and I really appreciate getting all the comments um, relating to this, this project proposal. And I got some great feedback, so I really do appreciate it. Um, 
the presentation tonight will be posted on our website at srcity.org forward slash let me do this real quick excuse me forward slash summerfield road improvements there there's the website um the presentation will be replayed and tonight's meeting will be placed on the website as well um, so and if you have any further questions i'm going to leave this slide up with our website and my contact information for an email if you choose to email me if you have any other uh, questions related to the project um, feel free to jot this down and send me an email and i'll do my best to reply to you uh, in a prompt manner so with that thank you again and we'll leave this up for another couple minutes and good night i hope you enjoy your memorial day weekend